right, so we are going to continue this week's trend. We are talking about sealed items. We're talking about booster boxes. So on Sunday, we talked about uh, Sun and Moon Era. We're kind of going in order of releases here. So this today, we're going to talk about Sword and Shield Era booster boxes. I think a lot of people know uh, about booster boxes now. A lot of people are kind of in the right mindset. Even if you got into Pokemon, let's say, during the pandemic, or maybe even a little bit after the pandemic, there's been so much content recorded out there as far as how uh, sales and distribution channels work uh, that a lot of people kind of already know what's going on with booster boxes boxes and when uh, the best time to buy them is, what price point is the best to pay for them, and what might happen to them once they go out of stock. A lot of time people uh, t- people will keep track of what's going on on the Pokemon Center website to see what is available and what is no longer available, and then they'll kind of compare that to uh, time in release, so how long a set has been out to see if there's a possibility that it is going to get reprinted and things like that. I think that's been basically communicated quite a bit over the past couple of years. For those of you who don't know, there's basically two different uh, distribution channels. Pokemon Prince, all this product billions of cards right uh and then you have two different funnels that these cards go in so if they get packaged up into booster boxes let's say just for example obviously there's a ton of different products that these get packaged into uh, but let's just say booster boxes one avenue that they would go to would be the pokemon center website but also other brick and mortar retailers uh that have distribution centers like a, a walmart distribution center or a target or an amazon or something like that a big box retailer that now sells booster boxes it wasn't always like that but over the past year so uh, a lot of these uh, retailers have been able to start selling booster boxes. The other funnel goes to actual distributors that are located all around the world uh, with a good chunk of them being in the United States who then funnel those booster boxes to brick and mortar stores, to L- online LGSs, places like that that, that would, would then grow the game or sell to the end consumer. Now, Pokemon Center sticks to MSRP. They put a manufacturer suggested retail price on their product. They stick to that. So uh, you're looking at for the Sword and Shield era in specific an MSRP MSRP or a manufacturer suggested retail price of about $144. Now, if you've been around during that time frame, during the Sword and Shield generation, you were able to buy every single booster box for much, much cheaper than that. And the reason behind that is because it's a constant race to the bottom when you own an LGS, whether it be a brick and mortar store or an online LGS, you want your product to sell. Well, how are you going to do that? You are going to have to outprice your competitor a lot of times. Good customer service is going to be great. However, it's only going to take you so far. At the end of the day, your wallet talks money talks that's a big deal so a lot of times people are going to look for the best deal on a specific product so a lot of times you would constantly race to the bottom which is why if you go to uh, a brick and mortar store right now you might see booster boxes a little bit more expensive than what you can find online but for the most part a lot of retailers a lot of retailers that are not owned by um, a a bigger entity are are going to stick to something that's more along the lines of market price this was a big issue during the pandemic because market price on a lot of products was always much higher than it should be a lot of scalping issues a lot of issues with products being sold at a higher cost and things like that. Now, Sword and Shield was interesting because there were so many products that were printed and there was a a quantity that was absolutely massive because demand was so nuts. And there was all this attention that was being paid to sealed products and things like that because we saw what happened with old sealed products, old booster boxes. You saw base booster boxes jump up to $30,000. Now they're sitting at, you know, $12,000, $13,000, $14,000 a few years later. But these jumped up like crazy. So people are like, well, I'm going to keep this product sealed and I'm going to put it in a closet for a long time and hope that it matures. And for the most part, uh, all the time, booster boxes, which is basically the capstone item of a new set, does mature over time. Now, Sword and Shield, a lot of people are paying attention to what's going on uh, because Sword and Shield is kind of at an era right now where the reprint window is basically closed. So Pokemon is like a year and a half after a set set releases. Very rarely does Pokemon put out uh, more of that product. Now, it wouldn't surprise me, and I don't think it would surprise anybody at this point if they were like, hey, tomorrow we're going to reprint Evolve in skies because we can now most likely they're not going to do something like that however uh, it has happened where once in a blue moon a few years after a set release uh pokemon will introduce a reprint of that set for some reason or another or maybe they find additional stock of it somewhere and it shakes up the market a little bit or impacts the market a little bit now sword and shield uh has paid been paid a ton of attention over the past couple of years and especially over the ca- past couple of months as the later end of sword and shield the, the sets that a lot more people enjoy has started going out of stock and because of that we are seeing some massive increases uh in the back half of sword and shield so we're going to look at the sword and shield era booster boxes here uh to kind of see what's happened kind of recap what's happened now i don't know if this is going to happen to 
Scarlet and Violet. My best guess is that it's not going to. Demand is a lot different from Scarlet and Violet. Obviously, you don't have the alternate art chase uh, in Scarlet and Violet. You do have a lot of really cool special illustration rooms, but I think Pokemon learned a lot from what is happening or what happened during the pandemic. So I don't think you're going to see massive gains or anything like that through the Scarlet and Violet era. Now, I could be wrong. Obviously, we have seen uh, Paldea Evolve do extremely well, albeit still in its reprint window, uh, it has done really well. So it's always interesting to kind of look at what's going on uh, but be careful. Just be careful with how you spend your money, how you spend your collection dollars, because uh, you never know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. But if we pay attention to the past, uh, very interesting to look at. Here's Sword and Shield Base, for example. Not a whole lot of buzz behind the Sword and Shield Base. There are some really cool competitive cards in Sword and Shield. Obviously, the introduction of the Zacian, the Zamazenta, the Sword versus Shield idea was very, very cool, although Hop was kind of annoying. Uh, in June of 2023, this booster box was sitting at 295 557. You can still buy some of these booster boxes at distribution. Now, they are basically market pricing, and they do limit you to like one uh, per week or something like that, but you can still find them occasionally. June of 2023, this was sitting at 295.57 over the past year. This is an example of a booster box, a product that has gone down. It has done, uh, gone backwards. In April of 2024, this was sitting at a one-year low of 263.54. So, over the past year, this one has actually lost about 10%. Now, it is well up from where it was. You could buy Sword and Shield booster boxes at one point in time uh, for $85, $90. And that's really kind of the key key thing to remember here is that if you can spend $85, $90 on a booster box, generally, uh, you're going to be okay. You're going to be in good shape. Uh, if you want to open it, go ahead. The fun cost won't be that bad. If you're going to sit on it, go ahead. Uh, it, it, should, it shouldn't go that much lower than that. But obviously, once you get to a point where it hits $300, somewhere around there, if it's a less popular set and less in demand and less people buy it, that race to the bottom still occurs even when there's less product out there so there's still going to be collectors who are trying to outprice their competitors maybe they remember what they bought it at and because of that the demand just wasn't there for sword and shield and because of that it has dropped considerably over the past year now it did start rebounding because a lot of booster boxes have rebounded over the past couple months in fact a lot of products in general last year in 2023 we talked all the time about products that were going down about opportunities that were out there about all these cards uh, that were dropping like crazy now over the past couple months a lot of stuff is going in the opposite direction. Rebel Clash, also not one of those, not doing as well. Uh, probably one of the least favorite sets from the Sword and Shield block for a lot of people. This one, maybe Darkness Ablaze. Some people might say Sword and Shield base. Uh, but this one spent most of 2023 actually increasing in price. It jumped all the way up to 231.62 at one point. That was in January. And now it's basically lost everything that it gained over the past month. It's dropped down to uh, 214.41 currently, which is just off of its one-year low, which it hit last June of 213.26. So basically over the past year, you have Sword and Shield, which has dropped about 10%, and you have uh, Rebel Clash, which is basically flat. Here's Darkness of Blaze right here. This one got reprinted like crazy. There was a mass reprint for a lot of Sword and Shield era products. Uh, smack dab, like right around the holiday season of 2022, I think it was, where there was just a ton of product uh, that got reprinted. It was Vivid Voltage booster boxes, Darkness of Blaze booster boxes, Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain, another print run of Fusion Strike. It was just absolutely crazy, which really crippled the market at the time, and a lot of people kind of exited the hobby. Well, Darkness of Blaze was one of those sets which did get a lot more product that was pushed out, and because of that, Darkness of Blaze not being a very popular set for people to open, outside of the Charizard VMAX, there's just not a whole lot of love uh, for, for Darkness of Blaze, and that's just a regular Charizard VMAX. There's no Rainbow Rare Charizard VMAX or anything like that in this set, and because of that, it just has not performed well. You can see in November of 2023, this one dropped to a one-year low of 129.24. It did rebound a little bit, but has not been able to get back to its one-year high of 154.35, and right now basically sitting at MSRP pricing despite being sold out on the Pokemon Center website for quite some time of 144.04. Here is the Champion's Path Elite Trainer Box. This has been flat for a couple of years. Now it has gone up and down. It did jump up to about 110, 120. It's dropped down to about 80, 90. But for the most part, it's been right around 100 and 110 dollars for the past couple of years. You can see at one point in November of 2023, it was down to $92.70. It jumped up to about 120 in January before coming back down. Uh, Champion's Path is really kind of the introduction of the pandemic of the rise of Pokemon again. That was right around the time after uh, Shining, after uh, Champion's Path released. You had Logan Paul do that big box break and a lot of attention 
attention. A lot of eyes got put on Pokemon that probably shouldn't have gotten put on Pokemon. And then because of that, uh, Champion's Path was sold out like crazy. But there were additional print runs that kind of came out, uh, which fixed the market quite a bit. Champion's Path has been right around the same price for quite some time. There are a couple of cool cards in the set, but not a whole lot that generates a ton of interest. Vivid Voltage was the first example of a set where really, before it even released, it was sold out at distribution. It was sold out at... Uh, at, at Pokemon, at the Pokemon company in general, and they didn't get the chance to print more because the pandemic was kind of delaying everything. So it did get reprinted, but much later, uh, too late, unfortunately, because a lot of people were already impacted by the inability to find Vivid Voltage booster packs were put up on the shelves and bought out like crazy and then sold on whatnot or other streams for like eight, nine, ten dollars a piece. It was very, very sad for a lot of people who were trying to just collect cards or find cards. In August of 2023, this had jumped up very close to MSRP at 139.85, but then you can see in January of 2024 it fell back down about 10 percent fell down to 125.12 started rebounding a little bit but still sitting at 135.28 we had the introduction of amazing rares in vivid voltage which is great uh however they were fairly easy to pull which crippled the price on those and because of that vivid voltage didn't perform super well even with the rainbow rare pikachu v max here's shining fates right here this one is actually done fairly well over the past year but this one was mass printed like crazy pokemon released a tweet a support ticket saying that they were going to make sure that there was a plenty of this product uh that was out there just telling people to be patient in september of 2023 this set is three years old uh in september of 2023 it was down to 37 dollars uh and now over the past few months it's been relatively flat it's sitting at 44 dollars 78 right now and you can see in february it hit 47 dollars almost uh that's still below msrp msrp on this item is 49.99 so still not quite to msrp despite the fact that it's been out a few years now you have the introduction of the alternate art sets and this is when a lot of people started getting really interested with opening packs pulling singles the chase cards and things like that battle styles has never been a set that's done really well although over the past couple months it's done extremely well it's jumped all the way up to 137.95 that's where it's sitting right now that's basically happened over the past uh two months there was a point last year where it did hit 120 but then started going backwards i do think there was quite a bit of battle styles that was printed and obviously outside of the empoleon outside of the tyranitar not a whole lot of law for battle styles as far as artwork goes and because of that it was relatively flat over the past year and over November of 2023 it was down to 101.56 this was a booster box that was sitting on the shelves for 80 85 dollars for quite some time uh, but it has done really well over the past couple months like a lot of other product here's chilling rain right here despite the fact that it went out of stock right around april right before april maybe march is when it went out of stock on the pokemon center website it has continued to climb quite a bit it's sitting at 228.15 right now and this is just over the past few months when it's done a lot of its damage ever since it went out of stock on the pokemon center website uh 141.07 was, was its low point which it stayed very close to that msrp pricing for quite some time once it goes out of stock on the pokemon center website there's really only secondary sellers that you can then purchase from and because of that uh tcg player sales shot up to about 228.15 which is where it is now and continuing to trend in the upward direction we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about evolving skies because this is is just an anomaly in sword and shield this is a set that people are going to love for quite some time you can compare it to team up you can compare it to other sets if you want that have done extremely well as far as talking about potential but we are looking at a modern box which is only a few years old which is knocking on the door of 700 dollars, which is absolutely insane that just goes to show you the demand for a product like this is crazy because of the artwork because of the storytelling because of the cards uh that are in this set the chase for a lot of people and i guarantee you uh you've all these guys are probably the set that's been open the most out of the entire sword and shield block and it was probably printed the most out of the sword and shield block but people just cannot get enough of it uh, and because of that 385.56 is where it was in july of 2023 and i remember talking about it then and it's basically done nothing since then except continue to climb it was a little bit flat up until february of 2024 and then it just jumped up like crazy now it's sitting at 693.04 or 687.71 continuing to climb here's the celebrations elite trainer box celebration is a very fun set it's going to be loved for quite some time relatively small set easy to pull different booster packs obviously you only get four cards in the pack pull rates are fairly good good on it which people are going to be excited it's got artwork obviously the throwback to the original 151 with the charizard the blastoise and the venusaur however it hasn't performed very well over the past year so if you got into celebrations when it was relatively cheap you're still doing fine however if you didn't get into it until recently it's been very flat over the past couple years and it might continue to do that for quite some time uh just because there was so much product out there there was a lot of it printed uh this was a set that a lot of people were super hyped about but 
still sat on the shelves for quite some time as far as availability goes just because there was so much of it. In April of 2024, this was sitting at a one-year low of $71.18. Now it's sitting at $79.02, so it's gained about 10% over the past year, but still down about 10% from where it was in June of 2023. Now we're going to hit the back half of Sword and Shield in just a second here, and this is where you start seeing the products that are going out of stock and really uh, some madness that has happened in the market in general. In February of 2024, Fusion Strike was sitting right around MSRP at $139.83. It goes out of stock on Pokemon Center website. It jumps up to about $244.45 in April. Now it's been flat over the pa past couple of months, but still a lot of love for Fusion Strike. There's still a lot of Fusion Strike. The go remind you guys, remind you guys, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of uh, sets, booster packs out there of all of these sets without evolving skies. Like all the other sets are still readily available for fairly cheap. You can find loose booster packs for fairly cheap. You can't find really a whole lot of collection boxes at stores that contain them, uh, but still a lot of loose booster packs that you can buy uh, for relatively inexpensive which is really really good if you decide you want to crack open sword and shield product but 237.78 so relatively flat over the past couple of months here's brilliant stars recently went out of stock uh, on pokemon center website and it's gone up quite a bit over the past month because of that uh was at 133.90 in november of 2023 went up a little bit but stayed relatively flat until april once it went out of stock then it shot up to 194.02 it's sitting at 192.76 currently and continuing to trend upward here's astral radiance which has gone out of stock and in stock and out of stock again on pokemon center's website a few times in june of 2023 this is sitting at 170 170 1751 went up and down up and down and then in april of 2024 like what we saw from these other products when it went out of stock it jumped up like crazy now it's sitting at 177.62 and continuing to trend in the upward direction a little bit slower than what we saw from chilling lane rain a little bit slower than what we saw uh from fusion strike uh but still trending up here's the pokemon go elite trainer box this is probably a product that a lot of people have forgotten about that was even released during the sword and shield era uh this is kind of like shining face it just hasn't performed well probably came out too late uh but in november of 2023 this was sitting at 33.53 so not not a bad set to open it's it, fun like you get you get hits which is great but a small set not a, not very popular uh sitting at 37.23 currently about four dollars off of its one-year high which it hit in february of 41.04 uh still very easy to find very available and because of that it's selling for about 10 12 dollars below msrp lost origin recently went out of stock as well uh this is a fan favorite and is going to be a fan favorite for quite some time because of that it has jumped up higher than what we've seen from uh Astro radiance from brilliant stars it did jump up to 222.83 recently uh, a reprint did slow it down quite a bit you can see in november of 2023 it dropped down to 126.95 and then stayed relatively flat for the most part the back half of 2023 then in february march when it started getting low stock going out of stock that's when it started jumping up quite a bit sitting at 209.98 currently and continuing to trend upward the last set that we're going to look at is silver tempest silver tempest really starting to climb quite a bit still in stock on the pokemon center website at the time of recording this but no doubt that's going to be the next item to go out of stock. So you can still buy it at MSRP, uh, but continuing to trend in the upward direction. You can see it was way down to 111.68 in November. That was after that big reprint hit. And now it's been steadily climbing like crazy uh, and continuing to move north. And it's just going to continue to do it as that product uh, gets out of stock on the Pokemon Center website. And the last product from Sword and Shield in general uh, was Crown Zenith. Crown Zenith is still a product you can find out there, but it's starting to get a little bit more difficult. And because of the love for the set, it's moving extremely well. You can see still way down from where it was now in august of 2023 it was at that one year high of 64.97 but a massive reprint at the end of 2023 really really stopped uh crown zenith altogether it dropped all the way down to 38 dollars and 44 cents it was relatively flat until all the buzz happened over the past couple months and because of that now it's jumped back over msrp at 51 dollars and 29 cents and continuing to trend upward we're going to look at scarlet and violet booster boxes uh tomorrow scarlet and violet starting to do uh, a little bit better it'll be very interesting to see how that product responds how those product response once we start getting to the point uh, of the age where a reprint window traditionally closes so i hope you enjoy the content if you do please hit that subscribe button down below leave a like leave a comment it goes a long way for the algorithm but most importantly thank you just for taking the time to watch listen love you guys really appreciate you i'll be back tomorrow until next time peace